shot! Hands off to Jones, kicks it out to Aaron Hart. Four seconds. Oh, he makes the three. three. He makes the three. Are you kidding me, Aaron Martin? <laughs> Welcome to Wildcat Reef. I'm Roger Alcott. The men's basketball team remains the number one ranked team in the nation and the top team in the Crossroads League. In just a few more regular season games remain on the schedule, and then it will be tournament time once again. Well, Tuesday night, the men hosted the heated cross-county rival Taylor University Trojans. Now, the Trojans came into the Lucky Arena in high hopes of an upset, but the Wildcats led throughout the entire game. Now, at the opening tip, Bob Peter, he gets the ball here right off the tip and drives his way, weaves his way in and lays it up for the first points of the ball game. Josh Maywar had the baseline jumper going. Got that to fall inside. Delane Mahurin got that tough basket to go high off the glass. Go back inside here. The reverse layup goes for Zach Vandewater. And then you see Josh Maywar with the baseline jumper from the other side this time. Tyler Greathouse got into the action with the long three there. And the lead starts to build for the Wildcats. Bob Peters right here. A, not a three-point play, but a four-point play as he gets fouled and hits the free throw as well. Going inside to Aaron Murray, still here in the first half and kind of finishing things off in that first half with the dunk right over the defender. Now into the second half, Josh Maywar, his jumper is good, working his way inside. The offensive rebound back up again, or in that time by uh, Nate Bubash. Here's Tyler Greathouse once more, getting that little jumper to go. The Wildcats pull away as we see the long three there from Josiah Godby. 75 to 51, the final score in this one. Bob Peters led the way, starting in place of the injured Johnny Marlin. But Bob had 17 points on the night to go along with seven rebounds. So Zach Vanderwater and Josh Maywar each had 10 points apiece. The men improved their record now to 25 wins, just two losses, and they sit at 13 and two in league play atop the conference standings. Well, they take the take on next the Spring Arbor Cougars this Saturday at 3 p.m. in Lucky Arena. And now we welcome in the head coach of the Wildcats, Greg Tonigo. Coach, thanks for coming on in and talking about a, a nice win at home against conference opponent and against Taylor. So all good things. You win against conference team, against Taylor and at home. So a uh, nice crowd. and It was. It was. It was I thought it was just a, a good day of basketball for our program. Uh, we continue to prove without Johnny. Um, like you said, big crowd. Defensively, we mm -hmm. continue to get better, which is where we want to see some improvement uh, you know, before March hits. So we're moving in the right direction. You mentioned defensively. That's probably where we'll start. Um, pretty good <coughs> defensive effort from this team. And uh, um, I think when Johnny went out, um, I don't know if it was anything that was said or just subconsciously, but it seems like last three games these guys have picked up their defensive intensity and their level of play. I think it was just a sense of urgency, you know. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, we can't rely upon Johnny just to, to create so many plays. And so collectively everybody stepped up. I mean, look at what Jacob Johnson's done in the mm -hmm. last three games. Look at what Bob Peters has done. Both Zach and DJ have obviously played like seniors play. And you're going to see Lane later on. He's done a lot of great things. Josh Maywar's played better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just think – Everybody stepped it up. It got our attention, and you know what? It's probably what we needed. I think we had we had gotten a little stagnant, and we were in a lull like most teams go through. And sometimes losses wake you up. Sometimes a little adversity wakes you up. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's been a little adversity. Kyle Stidham for Taylor came into the game averaging uh, about 15, 16 mm -hmm. points a ball game. Zach Vanderwater did a really uh, uh, Great job on him. Shut him down. I don't think he scored a field goal until very, very late in the game. No, he did not get a field goal. I don't think. It was all free throws. Yeah, it was all free yeah. throws. Um, you know, the, the, the great thing about Zach is, you know, he's always relished that role. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's he's a defensive stopper, and uh, but at the same time, he's added scoring to his his uh, game this year, mm -hmm. and so he's having a tremendous se mm -hmm. senior season. But it starts with his mentality, Coach. What's my role? I'm fully bought in. I'm going to do that. But he's also given us more than what we're asking for. You mentioned Bob Peters. I thought he had a really complete ball game. He had the 17 points, but you know, not only that, um, he had seven assists, yeah. four rebounds. I think earlier I said seven rebounds, but he had seven assists to go along with those 17 points, four rebounds, and played good on the defensive end. He he, he had a really complete basketball game. Yeah, Bob's back to just playing. Um, you know, we'd seen spurts of this mm -hmm. last year, and 
Um, he's obviously playing his best right now, but I think he's got the ball in his hands more. He's getting more opportunities, and uh, he's a heck of a player in his own right. You know, in that uh, uh, first half of that game, you had, the, I think, what it was 1817 there you know uh, a point in the ball game where i think they feel like they're in it you went on a 9-0 run and then by almost seemed like that, that goes from a one point game <laughs> to a 15 point game at the half i thought that was critical yeah our, our team this year's got a lot of explosive ability mm -hmm. um, and we've done that a lot this year where we'll break away from teams and and just stretches where we, we kind of go off offensively, mm -hmm. and that's what we saw the other night. It's been different guys. That's the thing. We'd, mm -hmm. It's not like one guy gets hot. We just really spread it around. I think that's what can make us pretty dangerous. Well, one guy we want to talk about as well, and uh, um, throwing back, a lot, I think, to last week is Lane Mahirin. He was Crossroads League Player of the Week. And we're taking a look at some highlights of him at Huntington. This was the first game without Johnny. Um, you guys were able to get Lane going inside and uh, – he had the inside-outside game going. He did that against Huntington, against Mount Vernon Nazarene. I think he averaged 20 points a ball game in those two games. Uh, pulled down some big rebounds. And he can uh, distribute the basketball a little bit there, too. Lane had 11 assists against Mount Vernon, which that's that's a lot of assists, especially yeah. for a post player. But, but I think the thing you mentioned has been the difference has been his outside game. Yeah. He's really shooting it well from outside, which makes him – such a difficult matchup now. You're going to come out and guard him, he's going to drive by you. If you sag off, he's going to shoot over the top of you. That play there was an awesome play with the follow-up dunk and, and got got the you know the Iwoo crowd going on, on the other side of the floor and, and I, I think shell-shocked Huntington a little bit. Yeah, that was a big play. I mean, you talk about giving us a shot in the arm uh, in that game. That's what it did. You know, then in the second half of this game, well, actually, now we're now at the Mount Vernon Nazarene game and, and again, uh, the ability to take the game to the next level. And, hey, look who's here. It's Lane Mahirin. And uh, what I was going to ask you about as Lane joins us is what we were just talking about is uh, I remember Clark Kellogg coming to campus once and, and talking to players and saying, if you want to be a better player, you want to be a great player, every year you have to develop another part of your game, and you don't do that during the season. It has to be hard work in the off season, And that's something I think people have noticed is you're stepping out a little bit more this year, added a little more of a jumper, those kinds of things. And, um, Tell me about, though, your approach to coming in this season, what you were trying to improve. Well, uh, the coaches at the end of the year bring everybody in and tell them what they think they need to do to keep improving. And coaches told me I need to expand. You know, I can't just be the guy down low trying to get rebounds and average seven points. They'd need me to, you know, grow my role a little bit. So went into the summer knowing that they trusted in me, and I just put some work in to try to give back to them. Now, um, we were talking with Coach about 11 assists against Mount Vernon Nazarene. Um, um, if you have the right mentality, I can imagine that's a lot of fun too, isn't it? <laughs> it was very fun, uh, especially to a guy who's had a lot of turnovers this year. So <laughs> it was a good change of pace. But uh, that just is a credit to the team, you know. Mm. I got the assist, but it was other guys making the plays. I just happened to be the one to pass it right before Wadi would hit a big three or DJ mm. would shoot from 30 feet out or. Bob with a great cut to the rim, you know, it wasn't really me. I just got credit for it. Uh, and I'll throw this out to you, Coach. Um, we know what our starters are capable of, and done, but your bench has been huge this year. Lane comes out, there's Nate coming in, mm -hmm. Tyler's come in, Aaron Murray's starting to step up. Yeah. Love seeing that, that whole team develop and, and the depth of this team. It's pretty unbelievable. Yeah, we've, we've got great depth, and uh, that's the great thing about this team is somebody new every night. I mean, Nate Bubash, I thought, ignited us in the St. Francis game defensively. Aaron Murray did a heck of a job last night. Jacob Johnson's really come on. He was really good at Mount Vernon. And, and you can go on down the line. It, it gets even further than that. So that's certainly been a big part of our success. And, and looking forward in, as we go into the last three games of the year and postseason, that hopefully is going to be a big part of our success. Well, guys, we appreciate you coming on in. Congratulations on the win against Taylor. Congratulations on the League Player of the Week honors. And good luck to you on the Final three games of the season doesn't seem possible, does it's it? Crazy. Or the regular season, I should yeah, say. Right. It's it's a lot right. of basketball after that, we hope. Sure. Thank you, Rod. All right. Well, when we come back, the women's head basketball coach, Steve Brooks, will be joining us and talk a little bit later about some indoor track and field with Allison Trevithick. That's all ahead on Wildcat Week.
Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. Now, the women's basketball team, they remain in first place in the Crossroads League race this season. They're having an outstanding run and uh, certainly looking for another conference championship. Well, last night, the women traveled across county to take on the Trojans of Taylor University. Now, defense was certainly the key in this matchup for the Lady Wildcats. Taylor shot just 35% from the floor overall on this game. Well, after the game was tied at nine early, the Lady Wildcats scored the next 15 consecutive points to take the lead into the locker room at the half. Now, the Trojans managed to cut the lead to single digits once the second half began, but they, they would get no closer the rest of the night. The Lady Wildcats dominated the Trojans in their own gym, stifling Taylor's offense and coming away victorious 65 to 47, the final score in this one. Katrina Blackman continues her great season with a game-high 18 points. Carly Cottrell shot well as she scored 15 points. Erica Isham was 4 of 5 from the field, 9 points coming off the bench for the Lady Wildcats. Now they improved to 23 and 4 overall, 14 and 1 in Crossroads League play. Now the women will travel nor north next to take on the Cougars of Spring Arbor University up in Michigan this coming Saturday. Well, now we welcome in the head coach of the Wildcats, Steve Brooks. And coach, uh, thanks for coming on in. I know uh, coming into this ball game against Taylor, they had been scoring a lot of points. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You guys always focus on defense, <clears throat> but you knew you had to put together a really a, an outstanding effort. And you, it sounds like you did. Yeah, coming into the game, uh, watching their game with uh, Spring Arbor, they put 94 points up in that game, and, and they had scored big against mm -hmm. uh, Mount Vernon prior to that. And uh, we knew we had our work cut out for us, and our kids really did a good job, especially in our half-court defense. Um, they hurt us a couple times at the start uh, of the second half uh, with some runouts. Uh, but I think we corrected that mm -hmm. and, and it made it a little more, uh, you know, difficult for them to, to score and it enabled us to get away from them again. In the first half, like we mentioned, scores uh, tied up at nine. You go on a 15-0 run, make it 24-9. And really, uh, I don't want to say never look back. You mentioned the little run they had at the start of the second half. But that, that run, 15-point run, it, it not only built up the lead, but I think uh, – um, took any kind of momentum away from what maybe Taylor had brought into the game. Right. Well, I think the Taylor-Indiana Wesleyan game is a special game. We can pretend like it's not, but the intensity level of the game is far different than, than a lot of the games. I, I would like to think that it's not for our kids, but uh, I don't think that's true. So, uh, But I think early on both teams showed some nerves, and then when everything kind of settled down, we were able to get away from them. Second half, uh, like you said, they come out, they, they uh, uh, get some points early, uh, maybe start to get a little bit of that confidence back, but you're able to, to I think Emma Stahl scored a bucket, made it once again a double-digit lead, and then from that point on, you guys built up, I think, about a 21-point lead at right. one time. Yeah, we, I, I think they cut it to nine maybe, mm -hmm. and then we had <clears throat> went on a little 5-0 run of our own. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Uh, and then we got away from them, and then they never really challenged after that. You mentioned that they really didn't get much going against you in the half court. Offensively, you guys had a 42 to 22 point advantage in terms of getting points in the paint. <clears throat> so uh, Katrina and Erica working inside, it's pretty pretty good night. It, it was a really good night for us because the way teams have been trying to play us is not guard us on the perimeter. And one of our goals for the game was to not settle for the outside shot, just come down and settle. Um, and we were able to move them enough to give some driving lanes for Katrina. Um, Erica uh, played off of that mm -hmm. and, uh, it, you know, gave us a chance to score some points in the paint. We mentioned 18 points from Katrina. She had nine assists once again. Right. And, uh, um, you know, she just, she really has the ability to, 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 to to change the complexion of the game with her ability to move the basketball. She sees the game. She is an instinctual player. You can't teach it. Um, and, you know, once she gets it going, uh, she's hard to stop. And last night she got it going in the second half, and it was really good. Well, only three games left in conference regular season. Doesn't seem right. possible, um, but that's where you're at. Um, you have a, I want to say, commanding two-game lead, but um, you guys, I know, want to, 
finish the season strong and 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 win the title outright. You don't want to give anyone a chance to maybe no, share. And that. I don't know that I would call it commanding to <laughs> a commanding two game lead with uh, with three to go. Um, yeah, we've got three games uh, and only one of those at home. Mm -hmm. um, we struggled uh, to play Spring Arbor in the first game here, mm -hmm. uh, and then. Uh, we have a, a, a really much improved Goshen team coming to our place on Wednesday, <clears throat> which will be a tough uh, night just because it's senior night and there'll yeah. be a lot of emotion. And then uh, Saturday we're on the road at Marion. So we're not out of the woods yet. We've, we've got some work to put in to make sure we achieve our goal of winning the conference. Well, one game at a time, right? Yep. All right. Well, Coach, thanks for coming in. Congratulations on the big win and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right. Well, when we come back, High jumper Allison Trevithick will be joining us from the women's uh, indoor track and field team and women's volleyball season. We'll uh, take a look back with Remy Beckner. Well, don't go away. We'll have more to come on Wildcat Week. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. The indoor track and field teams are underway and they are finding success early on in this part of their season. Saturday, the Wildcats travel to Anderson University to compete in the Anderson Invitational. Now, Jake Smith again reached a national standard. He placed first in the men's 60 meter hurdles with a time of 8.2 seconds. Nino Bellinati placed first in the men's 5,000 meter run with a time of 15 minutes and 11 seconds. And Michael Moffat achieved first place in the men's high jump with a jump of 2.02 meters. Well, the Wildcats will travel to Cedarville, Ohio on February the 20th for their next indoor meet. Well, joining me now is women's high jumper from that indoor track and field team, Allison Trevithick. And I'm so happy I just said your name right. <laughs> that was very good. Anyways, well, hey, thanks for joining us because we want to talk a little bit about indoor track. And um, with track and field, Kind of have, I don't want to say two seasons, but you have the indoor portion, you have the outdoor portion. And sometimes people look at the indoor portion as a, as a warm up maybe for the outdoor, or, or do you have separate goals for, for those? Um, it depends on what level you're competing at, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, for some athletes, they really focus on indoor because they don't get to compete quite as bit as mm -hmm. an outdoor season. Um, but ultimately, the ultimate goal of track is outdoor season because mm -hmm. there's higher standards and better competition. All right. Now, indoor um, for a high jumper, uh, it seems to me you, you have like better conditions. You know, it's, it's always, always controlled. So I've been to some outdoor track field meets where it, it's bitterly cold. But do you prefer one to the other? Or? Um, not really. Um, yes, you're correct. Indoor, we don't have to worry <laughs> about weather or rain or snow or anything like that. Um, so you can really focus on your event, but as far as um, a preference, not really. Now, as, a, as an athlete, now in your junior year, we talked a little bit before the show, uh, you, you were a multi-sport athlete, you played volleyball and ran track, but you're also a nursing major. kind of came to the point where like, you got to maybe narrow uh, in on a few things. So you're doing track and field now, yes. doing nursing. But as a junior, um, you're starting to see the, the importance of, of uh, leadership and things like that. You're telling me about uh, a new kind of approach your team has taken this year to, to, to uh, uh, team leadership and how people are being honored at meets. Yeah, um, the, the track teams, both men and women, have started um, announcing a special performer at the end of each meet. And what that means is this person not only went on above and beyond in their event, um, but they also went above and beyond as a teammate. So whether they were supporting someone who um, might have been struggling that meet or they just stepped up and took on a role that um, no one else was really filling. And um, the leadership team, both men and women, are trying to recognize that this season. Another thing you were telling me about, uh, you guys like to be involved, you like to uh, give back in service. You, I don't know if it's a tag team necessarily about what the women's basketball team did, but you're also working with Destiny's Rescue at an upcoming indoor meet. Yeah, this Saturday we actually get the opportunity to have um, the Destiny Rescue inventory of their jewelry at mm -hmm. our track meet. Um, we're also promoting awareness for that cause. Um, so you'll find athletes throughout the meet wearing a Destiny Rescue t-shirt. Um, the girls will be wearing bows in their hair. And ultimately, we're trying to raise um, $1,500 to buy one child out of slavery. So the whole track team um, is very, very excited about this opportunity. Well, that's awesome. Uh, now, Allison, uh, last question. Um, uh, indoor 
season's winding down. Are there any specific goals that you have? Uh, is there an indoor national that you're shooting for? Or, or what, what do you hope to accomplish personally just at the, as that closes out and you move to outdoor? Um, well, track is a special sport, and we get to compete in both Christians and mm -hmm. NAIA nationals. Um, and my goal for this season is 510. Mm -hmm. um, I've already qualified for NAIA outdoor nationals. And so the next step is reaching that 510 mark, which will, um, I think, really make my track career soar. All right. Well, that's awesome. Well, hey, we appreciate you coming in and just sharing a little bit more about the track and field team and what you guys have going on. Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right. Well, the women's volleyball team, they had another great year and they captured a conference championship. The women reached the pool play stage of the NAIA National Tournament and were celebrated with two All-Americans. Kyle Johnson sat down with one of those as he talked with Remy Buckner about the highs, the lows, and the future of Wildcat Volleyball. The women's volleyball team exceeded expectations in 2014. A team with one senior and more than one question mark coming in. What was the key to kind of finding your identity as such a young team? I think just making sure we were focused because I think coming in, like everyone has their like doubts on like how we're gonna do for such a young team. So just being focused on all of us having that one goal. The start was rocky and the Wildcats dropped three out of their first four games. Then they clicked. Beginning of the year, you guys start out one and three after a trip to Iowa. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you didn't lose for a month. What changed in those games? I think just our motivation just kind of switched. We realized that we weren't really playing together or playing like as like individuals and not really for the same purpose and just trying to like show our skills individually. Conference opponents were being dominated with Buckner and her teammates full of confidence. The streak, however, ended in humiliating fashion on October 1st. And up until that point, you had been undefeated in conference. Take us through that game. Um, honestly, I think we just came in like unprepared. I think we thought of the last time we played them and how we like beat them in three, and we were just comfortable with that and that knowing that. So we came in not like understanding that just like we got better that they could have too. What was Coach Motes like after that loss? Um, she just, I remember being just super disappointed, not really understanding why we came in with that mentality and not understanding why we kind of just came in there thinking that we had it in the back. After falling to Taylor 3-0, the Wildcats would again run the conference table, creating a final rematch with Taylor in the conference championship, a game that would go down to the wire. You guys get up two sets on them, and all of a sudden they start to come back at your boy. Fourth game was pretty close. What was going through your mind at that point? It was pretty nerve-wracking just because, like, we're, we've come this far and, like, just remembering the last game that happened and just knowing that, like, this could be it. So it was kind of, like, nerve-wracking because no one wanted to go to that fifth set because it can be pretty crucial sometimes. So just knowing that, like, we needed to keep our composure, play the way we know how to play, and just finish it out. The Wildcats would qualify for nationals, but would fail to make it out of pool play. Expectations, however, were exceeded. So what's next? After all, they only graduate one player. How are you planning to deal with expectations next year, potentially being higher for you guys and maybe that you'll get out of pool play next year? How are you gonna deal with those early expectations? I think uh, just making sure that we like stay humble in that and just knowing where we were this year with such a young team and just trying to keep that same level and then go further. It's safe to say the sky is the limit for these Wildcats. For Wildcat Week, I'm Kyle Johnson. Well, thanks so much, Kyle. And again, congratulations on the volleyball team to another outstanding season. Well, that's all we have for you this week. And if you have any comments or suggestions about our show, we'd like to hear from you. You can write us here at WIWTV, 4201 South Washington Street, Marion, Indiana, 46953. Or you can visit our website, WIWTV.com. You can watch past episodes and connect with us online there. Once again, it's WIWTV.com. Well, we look forward to being back with you next week. So for all of us here, thanks for watching Wildcat Week.